Cinema. Welcome back to War with Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Par the Collector. What's up? Race Leader Snow. Par always shows up for the show. Nice. Yeah. So you messed up and you didn't watch our movie. I know, bro. I'm so sorry. I've had a lot going on this week. It's my bad. It's okay because we were going to do Color Out of Space, which is based on an H.P. Lovecraft story, and I wanted to like go back and revisit it. Yeah, you've really been wanting me to watch this one. Yeah. So I'm going to give it the proper attention it deserves. Yeah. And uh, we'll definitely be the next episode, though. Yeah. So. so, for a filler episode, uh, we've been in talks. Yeah, we've been talking about this episode since we started doing this shit. We have. Uh, guilty pleasures? Yeah, movies that We are, shouldn't like or like doesn't make any like sense or, why we like. Yeah. Right, but movies we just love. Yeah. So, I figured it would just be a fun little filler episode, just to bullshit back and forth about some movies. I know, I wanted to do something, man. I felt bad I let you down. I wanted to still get some footage. It's cool. Know. But this, this is fun. great, man. This is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm really, really wondering what you put on your list. So I um, I initially had one list, and I didn't like the way it felt, so I refined it. You refined <laughs> like, it? As we were wa- working, when we worked together, I was like going over this list, like taking things out, putting things in. Right. So I feel this is a real Guilty Pleasures top 10 list that's catered specifically to me. Right. So... You said you got five, and we'll uh, throw. Oh, some I more mean, in. I'm thinking of more. Like as we know, I'm about to write another one. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna fill it in. So I go. didn't put it in any order. So I'm gonna jump around as like. Yeah, I'm not gonna do mine like that either. <laughs> These are just ten movies that like I love for well, some I, reason. I know there's like three or four that I'm gonna leave to the like top because they're just you right. wouldn't think they would be on here. So I'll just start with. Let's get this one out of the way. The pest. John Leguizamo. Yeah, I like the movie, too. We've <laughs> talked about that. I yeah. do like The Pest. The I pe- don't know why. Yeah. No, my wife, even beforehand, I was telling her my guilty pleasure. She's like, why do you like The Pest? And I'm like, I don't even know why I like I The Pest. I used to own it, bro. Yeah. I had it on DVD. My brother owns it because me and him bought over that movie. bought my copy. Probably. <laughs> I gave it to Evolution <laughs> for like a 50 cent, something like that. Um, I don't know. And I rewatched it recently because she's never seen it, my wife. And she's like, that movie is so racist. I was so like, so offensive. I did not realize that shit how would bad it never was. fly in 2020. Not at all. And what's funny is it flies so far under the radar, nobody even knows about it or talks about it. I think John Leguizamo, that's one of his like best, his like lesser known good movies. And I, I mean, uh, him as like being comedic funny because it's not a good movie at all oh no 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 it's but like it shows movie. that he's got some thing because he he plays a whole bunch of shit in that mm-hmm. like i don't know it just showed like he was a real actor in my opinion well a like, comedic actor yeah well so, something, <laughs> something he had something that's what yeah I yeah yeah he had, he had something about him and that i think that's why i like it because i love that character so much you know what's crazy is john lucas has always been like quietly around forever dude. he has He's in some amazing movies, too, man. Super serious movies, too. Yeah, like Carlito's Way. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's Benny Blanco from the Bronx, man. Yeah. I love him in that movie. And then he'll go off and do some silly-ass movie like Spawn. Dude, he I thought he played that clown really well. He did. Dude. You I don't even he, know it's him. I, I liked him, and I liked Michael J. White in that movie. I think if that movie had been done later. They're redoing it. Yeah, but it's going to be like, like, don't get me wrong. Jamie Foxx is going to kill that shit. <laughs> like, that motherfucker can act. Mm-hmm. But. I like Michael J. White in his own, you know, way. Like I'm right. not gonna say he's a great actor, but like he could have got he got the job done. And it's movie. mostly just it didn't have enough money. And bad writing. It didn't have yeah, enough. Yeah, the CGI looked like shit. I didn't think the writing was that bad though. It was mostly the. It was like they quit halfway through the movie. I felt like yeah. like the first half of it, like when he dies and goes to hell and all that shit. Like all that was really good. Except but then. The CGI. Yeah, that CGI yeah, obvious, in hell is probably the yeah. worst thing I've well, ever Well, I mean, seen. you got to think, what was that, 95, 96? What Jurassic Park. Oh, fuck. But that's <laughs> animatronics, too, though. Like, yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's is they Spielberg. Went, <laughs> they went full CGI. Spielberg right. went half and half, and that's how you do it, is you go half and half. You don't go full CGI unless you got the talent. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to have some James Wan shit going. But, uh... So yeah, the pest is just like yeah, one, of just one of those movies that movies, yeah. I love, and it's always be around. And I think about it so much. That bathroom song that he sings in the be- be- uh, beginning. Oh, it's so credits, retarded, but it's great. I sing like, it constantly in my head, at least once a day. I'll go through that song. Yeah, that movie's weird. Oh, that's is. crazy, bro. We talked about that, and I still forgot you would say that. All right, here's one. I'm just gonna fire one off. <laughs> the Pitch Perfect series, bro. What? Not the third one. <laughs> Not the third one, but the first one, I love that shit, man. 
It was originally on my list. I loved the first Pitch Perfect, man. I get it's really good. Rebel Wilson's hilarious. That movie's it. fucking hilarious. And uh, Anna Kendrick's good in it, too. But yeah, I don't know why. But the second one, half of it. And it's kind of a musical, too. And you said there was no musical. I guess I didn't think about that, man. I mean, it's not a musical, but there's a lot of music in it. And man, and, and that part at the end with the little nerdy kid who gets picked on through the whole movie. Mm-hmm. He sings I Got the Magic by fucking Weezer. He kills it. I love that song. Now, the guy that plays the Anna Kendrick's boyfriend in that one, I don't right. like that dude. I don't think he's a very good actor. He's only in one movie I like. Oh, that's that? 21 and over. Mm-hmm. I kind of liked him in this movie, though. He was charming. Yeah, it was like, I don't know, too charming. I guess. Yeah, when they were in the record store and he was trying really hard to like. I think I get that thing that was part of his character or whatever. Right. But like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just not. A, I, I don't know. I'm not What's funny is. uh. When my wife and I worked together, because that's where we met, people kept talking about Pitch Perfect, and I'm like, what is Pitch Perfect? And they're like, oh, it's a movie, really good, da 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 because they kept doing the cup thing. And I think that's crazy that... Uh, the fucking cup song. Oh, well, yeah, that that's good, but uh, just the acapella, like, they make the entire beat with their voice. Like, oh, it was amazing. I think that's great. I know, it made me know? want to get into acapella, like, listening to it. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't have the voice for it, but, like... You know, those old barbershop quartets and shit. Like, I kind of like that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, a little doo-wop, you know? I, I like that, you know? I love the old washed-up guys that used to do They're acapellas. They're all just, like, four hobos, but they have the voices of angels. <laughs> just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, But, yeah, so we watched Pitch Perfect just because we wanted to see what it was all about, and I was dying laughing. The second part in the second Pitch Perfect where they're all in the pool. Mm-hmm. And they go against the Green Bay Packers for some fucking reason. Like, that was funny. But then after that, I kind of turned it off. Like, I don't, I don't really give a shit about it. If I'm being that. honest, I don't even remember the second one. I just, I the, haven't seen the third one, I don't think. The third one, I, I didn't make it to the end of it. I gave up. Really? Because it was just like, fuck this movie. But that first one is so good. That first one is really great. They had something there with that first one. Plus, uh, what's Probably her name? Probably should have just left it with one. Yeah. Um, the redhead. What's her name? Like, her real name. Oh, I know who you're talking so, about. She, yeah, she's sexy. She's yeah. fucking... She's bad. Gorgeous in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's the one that has to have her throat yeah, yeah, operated yeah, on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She's, nodes. She's, yeah, she's super sexy. All right. Uh, I'll drop into a next one. Howard the Duck. You know, I've seen that movie like one time, and it's been like probably 15 years ago. But you only watched it the one time? Yeah, because like after the duck sex, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, it's actually done by... Um, Star Wars, what the fuck? My oh, brain George is not working. Yeah, it yeah. was George Lucas. It was supposed to be his blockbuster hit, but it bombed hard. And people, Super hard. And people give this movie shit, but I watched, I had the VHS when I was a kid, and I just watched it over and over and over. Old girl that acts in with her, I forget her name right now. But I think uh, that brought me into fucking manhood. <laughs> she's sexy, and definitely at that time period. And she's a good actress. I just don't know how they talked her into that shit. Like, yeah. Honestly. When she was like, sexually attracted to the duck it made me uncomfortable even even as a kid like i understand that yeah. this is some form of bestiality yeah. <laughs> and it's like the crazier thing is like george lucas still had a career yeah you know what i mean like he didn't lose all of his star wars money you do that movie now he's he's got all kinds of people on his ass yeah. like yeah it's gonna be bad they don't even do that shit in cartoons anymore <laughs> but for some reason there was something about that movie that i loved when i was a kid and i would just watch it over and over i guess it's the character the duck character was just so funny to me right i don't know that's that's cool so it kind of just sticks with me has always stuck with me i can watch it now okay i got one um youth and revolt i don't know what that is michael Sarah. and the reason why it's on the list is it's got a decent supporting cast. I think Ray Liotta's in it. Uh, Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> some, That's a strange cast. Oh, I know. It's crazy. It may not be. I don't know if it's Zach Galifianakis or uh, Ray Liotta. He may not be in that, but it's some older badass dude okay. playing it. Because these are all different guys that are banging his mom. And he's got like, he's just like Michael Sarah playing Michael Sarah, Just like the quiet like kid or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, his dad doesn't want anything to do with him and his mom is screwing everybody and he like creates this other personality who's just like a badass like somebody who doesn't give a fuck does what he wants says what he does you know shit like that and uh he has like a mental breakdown or something and that guy comes out 
and just like starts shit everywhere because he like holds it all in you know like so it almost becomes like a alter ego it does yeah and, and and like he goes back and forth and then he starts talking to him and shit it's fucking hilarious bro. i've never heard of this movie before in my life i think i own it bro i'll let you borrow yeah it. let me borrow it because that sounds yeah. fucking crazy it's actually kind of fucking hilarious but like i'm not a big michael Sarah fan is when he's the other guy, mm-hmm. I love that. Like, I think that's his best. Him and uh, Super Bad's one of my favorite movies because of the f- how him and uh, Jonah Hill play off each other. Yeah, like I like him as a second man, not the leading man. Yeah, well, Scott Pilgrim. I don't like that movie. <laughs> that's top ten favorite movies. For I me. know, I know, and I've tried watching it, and like, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. I love everything about that movie. I, I do like certain but aspects of it. But like, that's really the only thing that and um, the show, uh, Arrested Development. Yeah, he's not even really the lead on that. Which no, is no, like, no. I'm just yeah. saying those are the only things I really like him in. Besides, oh, I loved that. him, and this is the end. If oh, that, super bad. What the fuck am I talking about? If he about? let that shit out in real life, like if that's how he really was, that oh guy would make t- tons more fucking money, bro. I know. Yeah. I would regret this, but I want to see a full, coked out Michael Sarah movie. Oh my god! Right? <laughs> like, go for it, dog. <laughs> He really like I that's just, his thing. He just I know that's his like how he does like. But that's what makes it funny is because you don't expect he's that just from awkwardly someone like that. shy. I get it, but like, dude, do something different, bro. Yeah, and that's probably why he doesn't do shit like a lot. That's anymore. why I appreciate. Fuck, I can't think. Of, my brain is not working today, so I can't remember shit. But the guy from Zombieland. Oh uh, yeah, Network, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesse he, Eisenberg. He started to break out of his range, and now he's like a legitimate actor. I love he's both tried. zombie lands. Those are fucking great. They are, yeah. but he also did like Lex Luthor, which I personally liked his Lex Luthor. I did too. It was something different, right? And he's a kid, like. And people don't understand that he wasn't playing the Lex Luthor that everybody knows. That's the dad. He was playing Lex Luthor Jr. Yes, and a thank lot of people you. don't know that. Like they're like, he's too much like the Joker. It's like. No, he's trying something different. He's trying to break out of that Lex Luthor. Tr- I don't yeah. know. But that's the only part of that movie that I really like. Because that's how I would imagine a really, really smart guy is just be a little off. And I thought he did that very well mm-hmm. in Batman vs. Superman. But, yeah. I'm just not a, the huge. But this is like one, he's the lead, and he, he kills it. I almost put Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, but old girl, her performance, maybe not pick that one. I my wife actually made me watch that recently, like in the past like year or so, and I remember like I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. Right. Like I wanted it to be better. Right. But that's what I said. Like there, the, uh, him and old girl just didn't have a lot of chemistry. Yeah, there together. was. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I just remember like sh- this missed the mark for me, but it was so close. But it's hilarious, and this one is alter ego's got like a pencil thin mustache. <laughs> His name's Francois Dillinger. Does he draw it on each time the personality comes on? Yeah. <laughs> And he's just like a badass. He's always smoking a cigarette, too. Look um, at you. You're fucking pathetic. <laughs> like, it's hilarious, bro. Like, Yeah, pull that out. Let me borrow it, because yeah. that sounds so ridiculous. But that's one of my guilty pleasures, because I'm not a huge Michael Sarah fan. And I that see. one, I'm just like, you know what? I'll fucking watch that anytime. It's so on. is it a good... You think it's a good movie, or is it like... I do think it's a good movie. Oh, okay. And, and you learn... The, you know, he learns the life lesson and shit. Like, it's it's not bad. Okay. That's why I own it. <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> you know me. If a movie's cheap enough, I'll always buy it. True. So my next one is a guilty pleasures, not because I think it's a bad movie, just because literally everyone that I've shown it to fucking hates it, and it makes me so angry. Don't mess with the Zohan. Oh, I like Zohan. Everybody You have that to I've... take it. You can't take it serious. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of movies, that's why people hate them, is they take it too serious. Like, dude, it's meant to have a fucking fun time. Like, I don't know, but I like Mick, and uh, he was dating this one girl at the time. I used to go to their house, and we'd just watch movies. Mm. And I brought over Don't Mess With The Zohan. They watched it, and they're like, it was fucking stupid. I was like, okay. I showed it to my wife. She's like, it was fucking stupid. Like, m- everybody that I show it to does not like that movie. It's, it's but got, I fucking love it. It's got funny shit in it. <laughs> I'll like, pull it out every once in a while and be right. like, ah, oh, it's so fucking silly. It's just so over the top. Pretty sure I own it. Ugh. Yeah. I think I got almost every Adam Sandler movie, but I definitely, I think I own that. I think, I think he missed the mark. I think I see what he was trying to do, but he mm. went too silly with it. It was kind of crazy because, like, I felt like if Borat wasn't around, mm-hmm. it would have done better. You think so? Because you don't have that, because that's what I felt like he was doing. It was just like a, a, a watered down spin on on Borat, honestly. Like, well, I think what he was trying to do was trying to humanize 
that side of the world persians yeah they was trying to show like they're just people just like us we don't like because there's a lot of hate towards those people there's a lot of well, especially here in america i get that yeah, but there's also a lot of i don't know he's a lot of culturally insensitive things in that movie too there are like the hummus yeah and that was disgusting a lot of the play on the hummus yeah. was just like all right bro we get it that's what i'm saying he took it He's like trying to humanize these people, but then took it too far and was making fun of them all over again. Well, so do you know the craziest thing is is like it's not doesn't make my top five Adam Sandler movies, but it's not in my top five worst Adam Sandler movies either. So Yeah. It's like that's it's, how I feel about it. It's only on my guilty play. I mean, he has other movies that I love more than this one. It's just right. nobody likes this movie except me, I feel you know, like. You know another Adam Sandler movie that I'm gonna put it on the list right now. Boom. Cause you brought it in on but uh funny people. You like that movie? I do. I I fuck with the dark humor. Like Seth Rogen was good in it. He was good in it. Like it, it's not a great movie, but it's I, I don't know. I love the shit with the stand up. So like that's how people don't think about how tortured mm -hmm. some comedians are, man. And that's True. why they are the way they are. Right. Like Richard I mean, I Pryor. haven't seen this movie in years. I just remember watching it the one time and it felt like two movies smashed on one. It's such a crazy, funny play on irony because, like, you're a stand-up comedian and you're dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know you're dying. Like, But your whole purpose in life is to be funny. How do you be funny when you know your fate? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I always get a good – I don't know. I like it. I might have to rewatch it because it's been, what, 14 years since I've seen that movie? it's got a fucking ridiculous cameo cast, bro. It does. Like, and I think that's another reason I hated it. I felt like it was, like, a – uh, like here's all the people in Hollywood that I know that owe me. It was literally like Adam Sandler pulling out his oldest fucking Rolodex and was yep. like, "Yo, I don't give a fuck what you're doing. You got to come do a little bit in this." Exactly. And I felt like it was just a show off film. There like, was comedians in that fucking movie that I forgot about, man. <laughs> like, I, like I said, I enjoy it. It's one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies, but hmm. I might have to give it a rewatch because I just remember watching it and I'll, not I'll liking let you it at it, all. Own it. Yeah. Um. We'll go for a uh, musical, Repo the Genetic Opera. I've seen Repo, man. That's all I've seen. No, this is before that. <laughs> and I know Mick is like yelling <laughs> at the fucking screen. So Mick, back in the day, he knew some guy that was obsessed with Repo the Genetic Opera. And he's like, I watched it and it's the worst movie I've ever seen. Fuck that movie. And I, I always take Mick's opinion. Mm. And so I was like, I'm not going to watch it. Mick doesn't like it, so I probably won't like it either because me and him have like almost like damn near similar taste. Mm. So years go by that I don't watch it, and I'm actually purposely avoiding this movie. And then I uh, got with my wife, and she had it in her DVD collection, and she's like, have you ever seen this? I'm like, no, I heard it was shit, though. She's like, why don't you judge it for yourself instead of like, I was like, fine, I'll watch it. And it's actually just silly yeah. in a good way. And I, I actually kind of like the music for the most part. There's a couple of songs in there that I don't like, but it's just a silly movie. So the premise is this guy owns this corporation that if you need an uh, organ transplant, they will loan you an organ, and then you have to make payments on that organ. But if you falter on your fucking payments, he hired a hitman guy that's going to go in your house and take it out of your body. Dude, it's just like the movie Repo, man. No, 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 it's the same thing, but this is like a a, a musical, like, over-the-top, almost like a cartoon. Oh, so it's like a play on that? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but this guy has... Jude Law could have done both. Right. He, um, the assassin guy has a daughter that he wants to keep her safe, so he's, like, lying to her about her sickness she's not well or whatever mm. i don't know it's a crit i mean paris hilton's in it and she's it really shows how bad of an actress she is was but, there ever like a person out there that thought she was an actor <laughs> like uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking simple life right when she died in house of wax that was fucking gratifying i never saw that it's because actually, she was in it i didn't watch it i would put that bitch on my guilty pleasures list too if we're being honest because like i hate chad michael murray Mm -hmm. that he's a shit actor my wife loves one tree hill i've seen that show way more than i ever want to admit to in my life why the fuck do women you know, they, they keep this shit on tv that's another argument for another day but 
Yeah. Shows our wives. Paris love Hilton's that in that don't... shit too. And she's playing a ditzy dumb blonde bitch. Okay. And it's still terrible, bro. Like I still don't believe you. <laughs> she's playing herself. Like, just a spoil rich bitch. Get out of get out of the fucking limelight. Nobody cares about you. Yeah. Like just go be rich. Like enjoy your life. Just not on camera. So is that your next pick? Is uh, House of Wax? Nah, man, fuck that movie. It doesn't get. It doesn't get to make it. I just remember it. I, I don't like. I don't have anything thing. more to say about Repo except a lot of people hate it, and I think that it's it's like you were saying about um that one movie, like people uh Zohan. Oh yeah. yeah. People are taking it too serious. Like just have fun with it. Right. So, well, I mean, honestly though, man, if you think about it, like you would never like any Will Ferrell movie if if you couldn't just have a good time and watch yeah. a movie. You know what I mean? Because that's his. This, that's his whole meat and potatoes, but my next one is uh, a movie called Goal. Goal. It's about a Mexican American uh, kid from LA mm-hmm. who is really good at soccer and he wants to play professional soccer. Right. So he, his dad or somebody he knows, gets him a tryout for the Premier League in England, which is like one of the biggest soccer leagues in the world. And it's for a shit team. He goes to the team and he like he's not good enough to make it and he's got asthma and he doesn't want to tell anybody he's got asthma for some reason. I don't know why, but they have like medicine and shit now. <laughs> but uh the guy just like works to death and mm-hmm. ends up making the team and he gets good and like there's a sequel and a third one. And uh the second one he makes it to Real Madrid, which is so an you've even- seen all of these. I haven't watched the third one. Oh, okay. I haven't watched the third one. You're like, I, I'm waiting for the fourth one. <laughs> no, the th- shit, there may be four. I don't know. I, I quit. I can't quit keeping up with it. But okay. It's got ridiculous cameos from like uh, actual soccer players, though, because mm-hmm. it's, it's like a big deal of a movie, I guess. But but yeah, I, I don't know. I just like it. Like It's like a Rocky for soccer. I don't know. I, I enjoy I caught it two o'clock in the morning one night just like drunk or whatever just like watching tv i don't know why i wasn't asleep but mm-hmm. i caught it and i was just like man this movie's not bad <laughs> i ended up buying it like i got it for like a quarter down the road nobody's I, ever heard of it except you oh somebody's heard of it yeah but i yeah. love those movies i miss doing that though like i don't do it much anymore but i used to go to if I see like a a cover or you know what I mean or read the back of it or something, it's something I'm like I've never seen this. I used to do that with metal CDs a lot. When I would go into a, like Fye or just a shop that sold a lot of CDs, I would go through the metal section. And if there was a band I haven't heard of and they have a really cool looking cover or cool looking like band logo or whatever, I would buy it. That's how I came across uh, all that remains. Too bad there's shit now, but. Oh yeah, Fye. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, no. The band All That Remains. Like, they have Uh-oh. two good albums, and then they just went Radio Rock. Fuck them. I probably like the Radio Rock shit. Probably. Let's see. Uh, it's my oh, turn. Oh, yeah. It's yours, yours. Uh, just pick goal. I got that, too, if you want to borrow it. <laughs> no, I'm good. Um, The Pick of Destiny. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> you I'm not a Tenacious D fan. You don't like Jack at Black, all, America, though. America at all. I, I like Jack Black in certain oh, shit. Oh, I see. Like, but not like, oh, Jack Black's in it. I'm going to watch it. Fuck. I that. 100% understand that Pick of Destiny is a shit movie. It is not good in. But Tenacious life. D fans will fist fight you about I, it. I will. <laughs> and I get I, it. Like, I have shit that I'm like that about. But, like, to me as an outsider, I don't fuck with that movie. When I, I never watched their show on HBO. I never watched any of that shit. When I was uh, when I was fifteen, I bought the Tenacious D album when it came out, mm-hmm. and I've been in love ever since. I love, love, love that album. Every once in a while, I'll put it on and just listen to it all the way through. The skits are funny. The songs are funny. They're catchy, and I just love Jack Black because I feel like he's somebody I would hang out with. I worked uh, when I worked at a movie theater in high school. We used to cook and shit. And the guy I used to cook with, like he loved Tenacious D. He would <laughs> sing the whole fucking catalog every day at work. Like he loved them. Man. Yeah. I just never, I never got it. Like, but like, I guess Jack Black is kind of like who I would want to be. Now School of Rock, I love School of Rock. Yeah, my wife. And he's made... singing in that, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's not that I hate Jack Black's voice or anything, but. Just, I don't know. The Jumanji I movie, he's pretty funny. He does a really great job at playing that girl. I haven't seen the third one. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it either. One, but uh, The first one is great, in my opinion. 
I wish they wouldn't. I wish they would have just called that movie Kevin Hart and the Rock Go to the Jungle. It would have made just as much money. I I agree. He didn't have to use Jumanji. I know. <laughs> I know. It makes me angry, too, but I kind of let it go because I kind of like it. And it's so it's not trying to be Jumanji. It's being its own thing. It's, it's like, like uh, they pay homage, I guess. Like yeah. Do add the, the, the second one a little bit. But, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I love the pick of destiny. I, what's funny is I, the album came out before the actual movie came out or it came out and I didn't watch it, but I listened to the whole album right. and it's a very music heavy, um, movie. Mm. So the, the music from the album actually kind of just plays the movie for you, like scene by right, scene. Right, it's like you don't have to be there. Like I, I'm into music like that too. That paints that picture, tells you the story. Exactly. Like so when I watched the movie, I finally had that music correlated with, with the film, and it just I don't know. It kind of synced up for me, and I love that movie. And I get it, bro. I'm just I'm there with you in spirit, just yeah. not in enjoyment. You know, <laughs> I get it. But that's uh, why it's a guilty pleasure because I am fully aware it's not a good movie. Well, I mean. The, that's the crazy thing about it. That's a beloved shitty guilty pleasure, whatever you want to call it. Like, because mm-hmm. there's so many people out there that love Tenacious D, man. Yep. It's crazy. Um, You got mail. Oh my God. I did not expect that at all. I love you got mail, man. <laughs> man my mother watched this movie all the time when I was a kid. Like, yeah. I, 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 I fuck with that movie, dude. Dave Chappelle's in it for five minutes. <laughs> Literally has like twelve <laughs> lines. Such a waste of of, Dave, of the great Dave Chappelle. Tom Hanks probably don't even remember working with him. That's I how know. long ago that he shit got was. Ch- he got paid. He got a check. Um, Tom Hanks is great at it, and him and Meg Ryan, like Seaplus in Seattle, I'm not a big fan of. I mean, it's a good movie, but I don't I don't enjoy it as much as I like You Got Mail. Mm-hmm. I go watch that movie all the time. I own it. Like, I I don't think it's a bad movie, but you know. Why is it a guilty pleasure? I, just because you don't expect yourself to like something like that that much. The fact that these two people could love each other and never have met before, mm-hmm. like that's insane to me. I don't care how great you are at typing or words or any of that. Like, if I don't have a physical like see you face to face kind of relationship, like no, definitely. You know I don't I mean? remember because it's been so long. I don't remember if it's the same movie. But isn't it they try to hang out and they don't have that chemistry? Oh no, so they, they fucking hate each other. They meet and because he is a CEO, uh, the not the CEO, but his dad is owns this conglomerate bookstore, and she owns this little cute little bookstore that her mom owned and gave to her. And it's just like it's a full, it's like a local like hit. Like everybody in the neighborhood loves this bookstore, but. He, of course, is fucking Mr. He's like books a million, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? He's building a gigantic bookstore like 100 feet away from where hers is. Yeah. And that's what it's about. And then he finds out because she says something and it plays in his head. He finds out that it's her. So then he starts like he starts falling in love with her and shit. And then like, he wants to tell her, but he doesn't want her to think like you're a fucking creep, you know, like you knew and you didn't tell me. Right. So at the end they meet up and, uh, she's like, I wanted it to be you. Like she hated him, but she also loved him. You know, I don't know. It's a good fucking movie, bro. I'm thinking of another movie then because there was this one movie where these two people met online and then they tried to meet in person. They didn't have that chemistry. So they both got on their laptops and talked to each other in the same room. It was really strange. I think it was Jack Nicholson. Now that I think about it, I remember that movie, but I don't. I don't know who was in it either. I don't remember. I, don't I just remember, remember that one it, scene. Yeah. How strange it is! Like you don't yeah. have that physical chemistry, but you can still talk to each other online. Yeah. Um, this isn't on my list, but it made me think of one. So I'm not gonna put it in my list. But a movie like that that I absolutely love and I can watch over and over is uh how to lose a guy in 10 days oh that's a good fucking movie bro that's not a guilty pleasure no that's I'm just a fucking good movie. proud of how much i like that movie okay good i don't give a fuck <laughs> matthew mcconaughey is gold in that he shit is and i'm not even a, quite, yeah i'm not a huge kate hudson fan kate but hudson. she kills that shit too yeah yeah that's a great movie bro all right now we're getting into the nitty-gritty for me okay um i'll throw a mortal Kombat first the first movie I loved that movie when I was a kid. Yeah. It, I am fully aware this is not a good movie 
at all. But to see, to grow up on Mortal Kombat, the game, and then see somebody make a movie out of it, out of your favorite characters, mm. they killed it. They put their, I realized, I actually watched a video on it recently. There was a lot of love put into that movie. Like the people that were making it really cared about making a good movie. Mm. So that's why it's so, I think that's why it has its charm. <laughs> But it's not a good movie, like, at all. It's a pretty shitty movie. <laughs> but it's it's definitely a guilty pleasure. I love that movie. It's and, uh, the first one. Yeah, and it's crazy. It is. It's not perfect by any means. But compared to the second one, holy shit, it's an Academy Award winner. I still like the second one. I actually bought the double. But I think it's because I grew up with the characters, and I like just watching the characters on screen. Yeah, when they whitewash Raid, and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, that was a little. I don't know about that, that was a little whatever, but it's definitely a guilty pleasure of mine because I just love it, no matter how bad. Even the CGI dragon at the end, I'm like, ah, oh, it's so shitty, fucking. <laughs> so you, my next one, it's uh it's another like, chick flick. Yeah, Notting Hill. What is that? Oh, I feel like I've heard about that. Julia Roberts and Grant. Uh. I don't know why I can't think of his name. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. She is a movie star. Like, she's Julia Roberts in this movie. They just changed her name. And Hugh Grant is a travel agent or some shit like that. And uh, she meets it. Oh, no. He owns a bookstore. They all <laughs> fucking bookstores, bro. Maybe I just love bookstores. I get stores. it. You read. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. Holy shit. I'm such a. I'm into book porn, bro. Yeah. That's what it is. All those shelves. <laughs> Wait, you read? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> Anybody knows the channel, part of the collector, man. I, I just got all kinds of comic books, bro. I just buy them by the covers. I don't actually read any of them. Yeah, because you have so many, you can't. Like, physically, humanly can't read all the stuff you buy. I'm going to put it this way. If I never bought another comic book, like I could literally go. You could read a comic every day for the rest of your life without Pump. buying a new one. It's not that far yet. It's close. It's a couple of years though, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah, but they're all in order now, for the most part, except about for this last batch I got in. <laughs> it's about time. Oh God, I need another shelf, bro. It's ridiculous. You don't have a room. You need another house to put your shit in. <laughs> I was say I have to build me another wing. I mean, you got enough backyard space. Yeah, just I call it the Par Museum. That would be amazing. Yeah, bro. When I die, they can just put me in there with it. Like, fuck it. <laughs> Just bury the whole that lower. Put end it in ground. my will that if the kids sell any of the shit in there, you know, like they don't get anything, <laughs> and just charge like five bucks a head, bro. Come check out a body and all this cool shit. Uh, like, but, you're getting there. Yeah, Notting Hill. You know they. Uh, she goes into this bookstore because she's in London filming a movie. Because this takes place in England. Because Hugh Grant's British, and uh, they meet at the bookstore and like. He knows who she is, but she's like, she can't believe that he's treating her like normal, because everybody else is like, "Oh my god!" I was just like, because you know, like, she's Julia Roberts, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess he's she's like one of his favorite actresses, and like he just takes a shot. He's just like, "Hey, I just I would love to go out sometime to have coffee or talk to her about something. and uh, she ends up going for it, and they start dating, and. People find out about it, and then they start coming at him, and they start coming at her, and then because he's not famous, he's not anybody, you know? right? So she leaves to go do another movie, and they try to make it work, but then he starts feeling inadequate because she's like famous and he's nobody, you know, whatever. And uh, everybody in his life's telling him like, "Man, this shit's not gonna work, dude. You're not gonna be able to keep this going." Hitch. So he gives up and. Uh, she like tells her how she he feels or whatever, and he's just like, I don't think it'll ever work, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's her go, and then of course wakes the fuck up, and he's like, Man, what am I doing? This is fucking stupid. I gotta go get her. So he tracks her down, gets her, and then you know all that good stuff. So what is it about this that makes you like it? Because it sounds like a generic. Because even when I'm explaining it, bro, like I hate it, but like uh, Hugh Grant and uh, Julia Roberts weren't actually that bad together. I thought they made a believable. You know, chemistry. And the guy that plays in it also, uh, what is his name? 
he plays in a bunch of stuff, dude. He's <laughs> just like really narrows it down. I know, I know, I know. Like, <laughs> British dude. Okay, the replacements, the kicker. I don't know. Oh shit! I don't watch sports movies. He's in everything. Like everything British, he's in that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter. I think so. I think he's in it. <laughs> Pretty sure he's in it. So point. Um, but it is crazy how we just like we can fall in love with a character no matter how bad the movie is. It's, oh, okay. it, that character makes us love them. Um, shit. It would be easier if you just looked it up. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but as yeah, I was saying, like technology devices in our hands. I know, right? You can look at you literally have it at your fingertips and you're not using it. Um, but that's one thing that I've noticed is there are movies out there. I'm like, man, this is such a bad movie, but the characters make me like it. So. Um, I have one on my list that's kind of like Rise, that. Iphens. Yeah, because I know who that is. I'm probably butchering the shit out of his name. Oh, you definitely are. I can tell you that. Nobody's named Rise Iphens. <laughs> it's this fucking guy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's right. You've seen him in shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, he's great in that movie. He oh. plays like his roommate. Mm-hmm. And he's just a fucking idiot. It's hilarious. Just watch him. Like, there's one part where he's like eating something out of a container. And he's like, I think this yogurt's, I think this, <laughs> I think this yogurt's expired. <laughs> and Hugh Grant looks at it and he goes, That's, uh, it's because it's mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Oh, right. It keeps eating. That's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> it makes me think of Jack Black in that, uh, it's one nacho. <laughs> oh, it's about uh, David Silverman. Right. If what you, the hell? You it's took all nacho. the good stuff. Oh, you pick it up. It's one nacho. Doesn't work like that, man. That movie's hilarious. I don't I care. I like that movie. The unrated version. The PG thirteen is okay. But uh, um, <laughs> so yeah. I have one that's gonna be like a little off the wall. Okay. Bring it on. Okay, I you know I get that, dude. No, I get that. I you get don't that. get it. <laughs> so here's the story. Back when this movie came out, I don't remember what was in theaters. You love Elijah Dushku? I uh, Kirsten Dunst more so. Uh, I loved Elijah Dushku in that movie. Oh yeah, <sighs> Kirsten Dunst was my was my love. Um, but it's not even that. So we in our small town that we grew up in there's nothing to fucking do except go to the movies when you're like all of 15 years old Fair. so the cops started like running us off cuz we would just hang out outside the movie theater AMC. we wouldn't even go we wouldn't even go inside the theater and uh so they had to start coming up there and patrolling it making sure we weren't loitering so they had to, we had to start going into the movies to like hang out and at the time, nothing we wanted to see was in the theaters, but Bring It On was in. So the first time I went with a group of friends and we went to like the mugs and movie thing so we could at least eat while we uh, watched the movie. And then I went with a different co- group of friends and they wanted to go see Bring It On. And then I went with a completely different group of friends and they wanted to see Bring It On. So I saw it three times in theaters. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that movie made money because of you. Yep. So after like the third time, I'm like, I think I actually, because the first time I was like, whatever, it's a dumb cheerleader movie. I didn't pay attention. Them chicks get down, though. Yeah, they do. And then the second time, I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool yeah, that they like did all this shit. Those. And then the fifth, uh, the, the third time I went and uh, watched them, I, was, I actually like paid attention to the whole movie. And I. It's a great part watch. <laughs> 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 really, though. And I just have watch loved it. Watch this dismount, dog. <laughs> I've loved it ever since. Oh, yeah. I loved it just for Elijah Dushku. My sister cheerleaded, so she naturally liked it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I just I never it. gave a shit about cheerleading before. I didn't know anything about it, mm. but I watched that movie. That's really the only one. I haven't seen any of the sequels or whatever. It's just that one. Mm. Bring it on. <sighs> All right, here's my cartoon that's on there. And it's, All right, uh, I'll tell my cartoon after this. It, it's it's stupid, but I just love it. And I watched it with my kids the other day, and I still love it. It's going to be funny if it's the same one. Five goes west. I love that movie. That is not a guilty pressure. That is an ah, amazing. Movie. I just I, like. I feel like I'm 31 years old, but like I love that movie, man. Like I don't know. 
Give him the old lazy eye. Oh my god. We uh my wife and I, since we have Disney Plus, we were talking about old childhood movies and I put on The Rescuers Down Under. Oh, that's and a good I one too. Still loved it to this day. We're watching Five of Goes West this weekend. Dude. Thank you. Dom DeLuise does Tiger's voice. Like it's such that a movie good is movie. fucking great. It sticks with me to this day. It's just so good, man. It is. And I like a lot of cartoons, don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know. That one's there, always it's stuck special. with me. It's special. There's something yeah. special about that movie. Even the first one's good, man. Like, <laughs> All I can think about is the farting cat when yeah. he's on top. That movie goes hard. Oh, I'm so watching that this weekend. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now Glad I feel I a little embarrassed talking about my fucking animated movie. What's up? Frozen. Oh, dude, my daughter loves fucking Frozen, bro. And me and her could just sit down and watch it for hours. Like, there, I watched it just because my wife's roommate at the time wanted to watch it, and I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it with y'all. I fucking love this movie, it's and great. I don't know why. Yeah, it's great, yeah. <laughs> don't feel bad, dude. The I just first feel... one, I love the first one, man. The second one, I could live without. Yeah, we watched it recently. Too I... much fucking singing, right? Like, every... And the songs weren't that good either. No, no. It was like they were just throwing shit in there for the sake of it. Even the fucking Moose had a song. Yeah. Like, why? It wasn't that good. But the first one just hit me on a childhood level. Yeah, the first one's great. And uh, my daughter still, we watch I just feel weird being like a 34-year-old man being like, I fucking love Frozen. Now, will, would, I, would I have seen this without having a daughter? No. no, no really. I've watched it on my own. Yeah. So that's well, why it's on my guilty pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually just sat at home and like I want to watch Frozen. That fucking uh, the little uh, ah, bad day. I just gotta let it go. <laughs> Sing it, Anna, or whatever. <laughs> Sing it, Elsa. I know how you feel, Elsa. I just want to build a fucking Frozen castle and get away too. Just have an ice dress. People just leave. But really, it's on. that moose and uh, and the guy. Yeah. Their chemistry. The little snowman. Like every. Like I was saying about the characters, like I just love all the characters in this movie. Can I just say how much Josh Gad gets on my fucking nerves? Yeah, like, anything outside of that snowman is fucking annoying. Don't get me wrong. There's a couple of things I like him in. Uh, Balls of thunder. What? Balls of thunder. Balls of thunder. Balls of lightning. Balls of fury. Balls of fury. There nah, you go. that's not him, dude. That's a different guy. Is it? Yeah. Oh, fat guys with long hair look the same. He's in... Uh, it is a different guy now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, he's hilarious. I love that guy. <laughs> that that, that I, That's not a guilty pleasure either. I just like that fucking movie. It's, it's just so stupid silly. funny. It's stupid it's funny. It's stupid as fuck. Yeah, it's like basketball. You just dumb laugh at that yeah. movie. Airplane, any spoof, really. But, uh, yeah, I'm not a big Josh Gad fan. and uh, I'm not really either. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a movie he was in that I actually like. Oh, uh, the, rock st- the Rocker. That was all right. I didn't watch it. Yeah. It's got Dwayne from The Office or whatever his name is. Dwight? Dwight. Yeah, I never liked The Office. I know my wife loves it. She gives me shit about it all the time. Uh, I'm not a big Office fan. Sorry, dude. I'll hang out with your wife and you hang out with my wife. Or she just, hates Office, too. Or, or just fucking John Krasinski. I can't stand his ass. Like The only thing is I feel like he's kind of a dick in real life, too. So like it fits his character on the show. Yeah, that's the only part. But so he's Jenna, not acting. Jenna Fife. I can't even say her name. Jenna Fisher is a goddess. <laughs> she is like that chick next door, hot. And that's that's kind of my like go to is like that girl next door. That's why I like Thor Birch so much. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. I watched that. I can't look at her the same now. No, that no, fucking no, no. movie. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. I can't believe you don't like The Office. Sorry, dude. I got plenty of TV shows you probably hate that I love. You have a lot of shit that I hate. Yeah. That's why we do war with cinema, because we can't agree on movies. Yeah. Like, n- most of the time. Oh, yeah. Well, I um, mean, there's some movies you just, like, you are universally loved, man. Yeah. I think I have two more. Yeah, I didn't keep up with how many we've done, but I got I can go for whatever you want to. Yeah, you're next, but I have two more, and it's the two big ones. So Two big ones? <laughs> All right, dude. This is going to finish off my romantic movies. Uh, One Fine Day. <laughs> Have I, you ever heard of this movie? No. I expected to know a lot more of your movies than I did. Uh, this movie is starring George Clooney and Michelle Pfeiffer. And, One Fine uh, Day. It's got the kid from Home Alone 3 and the girl from 
That kid was annoying. I don't know. She's been in other stuff, too. She's grown up now, but she played in the Duff, but she was a baby in this one. She was a kid, mm-hmm. like a little kid. But uh, anyways, he's a investigative uh, book reporter or magazine newspaper. Yeah, something like that. And uh, she is a architect. She designs buildings and uh, their kids. There's always an architect. Huh? There's always an ar- architect. <laughs> yeah. And uh, their kids go to the same school. And they live in New York City. And uh, he's, of course, George Clooney, so he's just killing pussy. Right. And yeah, he's a he playboy. Does. and you know. He just plays himself in movies. He doesn't even need to act. Right. And Michelle Pfeiffer was like... She's sexy, but, like, she's just all in mom mode and a career woman, so she doesn't, like, enjoy anything. She's just like, whatever. And, of course, George Clooney's like, hey, what's up, you know, da 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 She ain't having it. Well, they end up, oh, the kids hate each other, but they go to school together, so they, they're in the same class, whatever. Mm-hmm. They end up switching their cell phones, and it just fucks up their whole day because he's, like, following some big lead on corruption, and she's got some big meeting with, like, and investors or some shit like that. And mm-hmm. Their kids end up getting swapped or whatever, and they end up sharing a taxi. Oh, that's what it is. Their kids are supposed to go on a field trip because they have a lot of shit to do that day, you know? And they okay. got, kids got to go to school. But they're not used to, or she's used to having her kid, but George Cody ain't used to having his, so he's late. And some happens with Michelle Pfeiffer, and she is late. Their kids miss it. Well, they end up having to keep each other's kids, and they end up <laughs> talking. And uh, they ended up working it out to like, I know you're not a serial killer, you're not a serial killer, you got my cell phone, I got your cell phone, and you watch my kid for my thing, and I'll watch your kid for this thing, and they end up throughout the day catching feelings for each other, and that's how it ends up with the whole one fine day, because at the end, they kind of like love each other, like it's not like they're, uh, you know, whatever, but like he goes over to the house, and She's like gets all excited like oh shit a man's here you know and then like he's just asleep because they've just had a crazy ass day. Oh, it's just a sweet movie. <laughs> Makes you like want to fall in love type shit. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I like it. There's a lot of movies on here that I haven't seen. We might have to do an episode on them because I'm interested to see. I, I bought that movie for my mother. We used to watch that together. I used to watch movies with my mom. That's sweet. That's how I have any kind of humanity in me. <laughs> She'd always be like, you can't watch all these movies about killing people and shit all the time. And she makes you watch these. She made me watch these movies. She's like, watch a movie with some heart in it, baby. And I was like, you know what? So that's how you treat women. All right, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> but uh, My mom was the, uh, what's his name? Dirty Dancing. Oh, Patrick Swayze? My mom is in yeah. love, was in love with Patrick Swayze. So yeah. I had to watch all his movies, Roadhouse, Dirty Dancing. That's how my mom was with Tom Hanks. Like anything Tom Hanks was in, we had to watch that shit. I really don't like Tom Hanks all that much. Oh, you're crazy, bro. So many good movies. Take him or leave him. Really? Yeah. That's like saying Johnny Depp's like take it or leave it. No, it's not at all. We talk about they're both iconic. They're both treasures. Yeah, but I don't have to like everything that's like iconic. I just I don't really connect with Tom Hanks. He played a motherfucker with AIDS, bro. Okay, Forrest Gump. We love Forrest Gump. I take that back. Forrest Gump is amazing, and you it wouldn't to. be without him. So, <sighs> I take life's it back. A box of chocolates, bro. Yeah, and I did enjoy the uh, the Lost on the Island movie. Uh oh, Castaway. Uh, Castaway. Yeah, that was a movie's about an hour too fucking long though. I enjoyed it, but I like stuff like that. So I am kind of hating though because I cleaned a movie theater at the time and it was so long that it would be the only p- movie still in. Oh my god! You know what movie I watched in theater? Fucking Open Water. Do you remember that piece of shit movie? Yeah, I saw that on my phone. Fuck. That was so the sad. Biggest waste of time. So sad, bro. But like, once again, it's like a movie that could have took like fifteen minutes. It shouldn't have been in theaters. It they should get eaten have been by like the fucking a... shark and like let's go home. No, yeah. one gets eaten by a shark and the other one just kills herself because. How she kill herself again? No, the guy. Her. She's, I don't remember she which gets one. Eaten by sharks too. No, they just take off their life vest and let themselves drown. Oh uh, yeah. Because the other that. one got yeah. eaten by the shark. Well, they're gonna get eaten by sharks too. So. Eventually, yeah. but they just like committed suicide. It's just two drowning. It's the girl that kills herself, right? I don't remember. I think it is. Cause I was 16 when I watched it, so I don't remember it. Yeah, because the boy gets bitten, and she ends up just letting him go. 
because like they're gonna come after her. I yeah. Know. Oh, it's and then she while. she waits a little bit, and then finally she realizes no no help's coming, and she's yeah. gonna die anyway. So she takes her life vest off and. You're just not drowns. even a sequel to that. Are they? Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know either. I think I remember seeing that. Fuck. <laughs> um. So here's your two that are a big deal. It's not. Um, this one is a big deal to me. <laughs> so this isn't like the greatest movie, but it's not the worst movie either. Mm-hmm. But it's knocked up. I love knocked up. Right. But there's something the reason it's on my list. Yeah. How many times have you seen knocked up? I own it. I own it on bootleg. As soon as it came out in theaters, I went to the movies and saw it like twice. Yeah. That's about the movie that made me love Joe Rogan or not Joe Rogan, Seth Rogan. <laughs> Seth Rogan. Yeah. Joe I've Rogan's all right. Too. I've seen it literally over a hundred times. Oh yeah, I love it. Like I don't know what it is about that no, movie. No, I, lo- I. That's yeah. not an exaggeration. I've seen it over a hundred times. <laughs> Dude, the 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 banter between the crew of guys yes. in that movie because they are actual friends in real life. Dude, I wanted friends like that, bro. Like, right. I want to live in a house with five other guys. And I think just that's what it is. We we pine for that kind of male camaraderie well that and like i never had that man you me, know what I mean? me either we i we've always had like a couple of friends here or there but we didn't have like a group of us right. yeah. and we all clicked on that level but um but i bought knocked up just because i loved seth rogan i'm like oh this is a funny movie i watched it every day for at least a month my brother would There's like so many good jokes so many it, one-liners it's just, in it it's so good plus him and Selma Hayek, I felt like they had good chemistry on camera. Catherine Heigl. Catherine Heigl. Thank you. Um, I felt like they had good chemistry, and I felt like him. Right. Like, if I ever got a chick pregnant, that would be the circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> like, it would be an accidental one-night stand, and I have to, like, get my life together to take that care of the That was the biggest kid. bag everybody had on that movie, was, like, there wasn't enough alcohol in the world to make Seth Rogen attractive to Catherine Heigl. <laughs> <laughs> Even in pretend pretend movie movie land, but that's like, a fantasy for like every man. dudes. Yeah, yeah. we. Yeah. I'm I'm sure like unless you're a fucking bodybuilder, right. all dudes feel like kind of goofy and not good enough or whatever. Right. So we have that fantasy of just sleeping with the hottest chick we've ever met. Like holy shit, how, why is this chick even? Yeah, right, exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, they make so. a lot of porn about that now. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but I love love. Yeah, love that, that movie. yeah, that's a guilty pleasure, bro. I know a lot of people I know love Knocked Up. Man. But I I've seen it. That's the reason it made my list is because of how many times I've seen it and how I'll go in there and put it on and watch it from front to back. Right. And then turn, and then do it again. That's <laughs> a good one. Guilty pleasure. Last one. Now I feel like I gotta make mine like good good. I did everything on my list over here. <laughs> Well, you did a bunch of rom coms. I know. You don't have any like B movies, kind of like Troll Two, that you like. That's not a fucking B movie. Don't disrespect B movies by saying that. That's a fucking D movie all the way. But you don't have any movies like that. It's a like step that. above horror porn. Like, Hentai's got better fucking production than that shit had. <laughs> <laughs> That's an hour of my hour and a half of my life. I'm never gonna get back, Greg. Like, you realize that? <laughs> Fuck. Any other movie, I swear to God, bro, the entire time we've done this fucking podcast, bro, this show, everything, bro, I have never hated a fucking movie you've given me as much as I hated that shit, bro. <laughs> That's because you didn't have fun with it. I was not having fun with that. I told you to go into it have with an open mind and have fun with it, but you didn't. You wanted to watch it all serious. I wonder how these motherfuckers even made it through it, bro. We're going to get together one day and we're going to rewatch it together because... <sighs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> oh, that movie is fucking terrible. Um, B movies, uh, like Crawl or anything like that. Mm. Well, Paul, you're thinking. I guess I'll say my last one yeah, because it's the big one. reveal that only a cup, like a handful of people, actually know about me. Okay. So when I was a kid, I used to go to daycare, uh-huh. and every. Once a week, I don't remember what day it was, they would have a movie night, and the kids could bring in a movie. Well, like, 80% of the kids there were female, and they all wanted to watch one movie. Uh. And we watched it every week for, like, the first five years of my life. <laughs> and it was Grease. Nice. 
and I railed against this movie when I was a kid so much, but it was one of those Stockholm syndromes that they played it so much. Eventually, I got tired of fighting it and just sat down and watched the fucking movie. Right. And because I was such at a, such a young age and I watched it so much, at least once a year, I watch Grease because yeah. I love Grease. Mm. <laughs> I love the music. I love John Travolta. I think Sandy is fucking gorgeous, but she's that next door if you take all the singing and dancing shit out of it honestly like the it's not a bad enough it's not a bad movie just with the dialogue like i could watch it like that all the time i love the music so much when we were working together i would pull up the grease soundtrack on my phone and play it while we were working nobody ever heard it but that's how much i love this movie <laughs> And I love the music. Well, folks, we all learned a little something today. Yeah. Grease. The Beast is a huge Grease fan. The uh, the Grease is actually in my top ten favorite movies, but I don't actually add it in because it's don't embarrassing. Tell it, yeah. It's like the 11th. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's a big one, bro. I don't know if I can top that one. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of the, just the softest, terriblest movie that I just love so much. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. They sound like you made pretty soft ones, though. I, but we I mean, talked about like Predator, but that's not right. that's not a guilty pleasure. That's just pleasure. Yeah, I mean, if you don't fuck with Predator, I don't fuck with you. Right. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Let's see. Guilty movie. Guilty pleasure movie. Uh... I got a couple, but like I don't know, like if it really deserves the crown of or like, just throw a couple out. I think I was a. Uh, you know what? I know what it is, bro. And Twilight. Yeah, it's gonna be fuck yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. I see that. You know what I mean? Like it's a movie that like, it shouldn't be funny. Like I shouldn't like it at all. But just some of that shit is hilarious. Like. <laughs> Uncle Rico? Like, I wanted Uncle Rico, bro. Like, that is fucking great. No, I completely get that. Because when that movie came out, I hated it so much. I was like, fuck everyone who likes Dude, this movie. Dude, and when I was I was in high school when that shit came out, bro, everybody and their mother will love this movie. Went and saw it twice, three times type shit. I remember I couldn't walk into Hot Topic without them having a whole section devoted to Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Dynamite. Vote for Pedro shirts, pins, yep. fucking draws, everything. But... That being said, one day I got fucking like wasted and we put on Napoleon Dynamite and I was like, oh, I get it. Right. And it's fucking hilarious. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you have to watch it that way. Yeah. You got to get your mind right and watch that one. Yes. <clears throat> you watch it like that. you will be like, how this movie not won an Academy Award? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of the greats. Fucking John H- Hedro or is it, am I saying it right? Hedro, Hedro, something like that? Probably. Header. John Header. John Header. Yes. How John Header came up with all that shit, man. He wrote that shit by himself, all that, dude. It's pretty off-the-wall movie. You know, they tried to get him to do a sequel a couple different times, and he was just like, I can't do it, man. Mm -mm. He's like, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it doesn't need a sequel. It it, it, it just keep watching that one over again. He goes, just watch it twice in a row. He's like, Napoleon does everything he needs to do. He He's running stuff when it's over. That's with. the problem with a lot of these comedies is uh, we have such love for the first one. We mm-hmm. just want to relive that love, but with something new. Right. And we think we're going to get that with a sequel, and we almost never do. Like, if they came out with a Tropic, Thun- Tropic Thunder 2, yeah, they it's not going to be it. the same. Well, uh, for they can't do it now. PC would never let it happen. Exactly. Even though Robert Johnny Jr. crushed that. He but, fucking killed it. But I get it. Uh, you, know. you want to know how much he killed it? I didn't realize that was Robert Downey Jr. in blackface. I thought that was a black actor. You really didn't? Like I did not. Oh, I knew it was him. I didn't know it was him. I thought it was a black actor and they switched out. It was funny, but I was just like thinking the whole time I watched this movie, I was sitting in the theater and I'm just like, how did he get away with this shit? Like... <laughs> <laughs> is he that well respected in the acting community that they just let him get a pass? Like, everyone talks about. I mean, from what I hear, everyone talks about like that. Like, how did that slide by? Dude, even Jamie Foxx is like, I dug it, I dug it. 
thing. I thought he it was did good. such a good job. It's because I felt like he respected. I mean, he didn't do anything crazy. Yeah, exactly. He and didn't. it helped that they picked a certain era. Like he was playing a 70s Vietnam. And he wasn't like, being like. He was hamming it up on purpose. Like right. he was making jokes and the real black guy was calling him out on it. Like, yeah, I mean, that was funny. <laughs> You're Australian. Be Australian. Exactly. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. <laughs> I like Trouble what you, Thunder. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> what do you mean, you people? Yeah, that shit's fucking... And then he ends up being gay. <laughs> I fucking love you Trouble Thunder. He loves Lance Bass. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, that's a movie's random fucking stupid funny, man. Like, um, I was t- I was telling my buddy at work uh, that I went over to this, my, this girl that was a friend of mine. I used to go over to her house and hang out. And her family always had on really dumb movies, like Epic Movie or... Oh, yeah. Those stupid, stupid movies, and they would be laughing their asses off. I'm like, why do you think this is funny? And then one day, Tropic Thunder came on, and we watched all the way through. And at the end, they're like, "It was a stupid fucking movie." I'm like, "Fuck you, fuck everyone in this fucking house," because that was brilliant. I watched Dunk. I watched Duncan checks in last week at this shit hole, and you're gonna tell me this movie's stupid? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd have been able to talk to those people anymore. I didn't. I don't think I ever hung out with them ever again. Fuck y'all. Fuck everything about y'all. Y'all should move. <laughs> Tell people serial killers live here. Yeah. That's another one I'm going to put on my list for the weekend. Tropic Thunder. I've been thinking about it way too much lately. It's because my wife doesn't like... Um, I can never think of his fucking name. The technician. The bomb guy in Tropic Thunder. Danny McBride? Yeah, she hates him. He's hilarious, man. She's like, he's such a creep. I love he's bounding down. I do too, and she will not. She refuses to watch it with me. Danny McBride, like, he's hilarious because, like, that's exactly how he is in real life, I would imagine. Like, yeah, just, I don't want to imagine him any other nah, way. If he turned out to be, like, super polite and, like, soft-spoken, I would be so pissed. <laughs> no like, worries. bro, you're just supposed to be a dick right now, like, a loud, obnoxious asshole just like me. Yeah, like, it's kind of like meeting Macho Man without his makeup and stuff. Like, right. Yeah, go put on the makeup before you talk to me. <laughs> Where's the shades? There's no Slim Jims. What are you doing? No tassels. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? Are you dressed in black? Go put some color on. Yeah. Uh, I love Danny McBride, though. I do, too. I love him in everything. My favorite is such a stupid scene, and uh, this is the end, where he's like, oh, fuck, come on everything. And then him and, him and James Franco are just like, coming on everything. Grew up in a house of women. Why don't they let you call over the fucking walls? Have a very explosatory ejaculate. It's hard to control. <laughs> I'll fucking come on your face, Franco. <laughs> Don't you fucking jizz on my face, big bride. <laughs> you get into the war, yeah. That shit's hilarious. Oh my God, so that whole great. movie, bro. I, I love, love that movie, man. Because like that's how I want to picture those guys. Like, yes. They just live playing themselves, man. Exactly. <laughs> so much about that movie. That's great. Like. Oh, well, that For was... all we know, the fucking Lakers won the championship. That's why this shit's happening. Like, <laughs> we don't know it's the end of the world. It's fucking great. I'm glad they went for it, though. The end, the end fucked me up. Oh, dude. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Seth Rogen's guy, uh, Evan Goldberg. They, they just like, oof, we might get fucking <laughs> trouble for this one. Like, Well, that's what fucking, um, what's his name? Uh, Kevin Smith was supposed to do at the end of Red State, but he I heard out. that. Yeah, I think we talked about that before. Yeah, I know, but they went for it, so I'm glad. Yeah, he was like, Kevin, you're not going to do the fucking apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I watched him do stand-up on it, and Kevin was like, yeah, you're right, I'm not. Like, yeah. I don't have it. I can't go for it. Uh, Well, that was Guilty Pleasures. That was, man. Next time, we're going to do Color Out of Space. We are. I promise. So we'll watch get, it. I will. I will. So it's <laughs> definitely right. happening. Until then. Later.